this last lecture i'm gonna um combine all of what we have seen uh, so far and uh, construct the real projective spaces just using uh using homotopy pushout descent theorem uh, fiber sequences and and whatnot <clears throat> so um but it begins with a very uh, simple observation about the type of two element types. This is a very nice type. Um, and um, it's defined to be the type of all types that are merely equivalent to the booleans. And the basic theorem about them is that the type of pointed two element types is contractible. So if I have a two element uh, type and I know one point in it, then I, uh, then I know the other point basically. <clears throat> then, I, then I know how to make it equivalent to the Booleans just by mapping that point to, to true and the other point to false and it's because it has two elements. Uh, that's, uh, that's a good idea, but we have to prove it. And, and Okay, so the center of contraction is, is the obvious one. Sorry. Uh, you take Booleans, you take et RF, or you take the base point to be true, and that's the center of contraction. <clears throat> so our goal is to construct a contraction, and to do that, we have to show that for every type X that is merely equivalent to Booleans, for every point, we have to construct an equation here. And um, uh, this, uh, this fact here um, uh, doesn't really show up in the equation, but uh, it's really, yeah, when you uh, prove an equality of a subtype, then you can ignore the propositions. So we do that here too, we just throw them out because <clears throat> equality between elements of propositions always hold. Um, but after we throw it out, we do uh, show slight, uh, something slightly stronger namely that this type is going to be contractible. And the reason we do that is because here there is this propositional truncation and we want to eliminate it. And being contractible is a proposition. So if we prove the stronger thing, then, uh, then the uh, profit that we get is that we get uh, to eliminate uh, this, uh, this propositional truncation. So it suffices to show that for every X that is equivalent, actually equivalent to Booleans, for every point, there is a unique uh, equality uh, from the parable true to XX warning. I do something that requires a warning, sorry. Uh, oh, it's for the audience, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, and in this situation, we can apply univalence. So the type of all axes that are that are actually equivalent to uh, bool, uh, that's contractible. So we can just throw that out and pretend x is bool, no, I mean, use x is bool. And it suffices to show that for every Boolean, the type of such equalities is contractible. And there's one more step with univalence. <clears throat> Namely, that uh, when you have uh, two pointed types, x and x with little x and y with little y, then the type of equalities um, between them is equivalent to the type of uh, base point preserving equivalences from this type to that type. And that type is defined to be uh, the type of all equivalence so that uh, e of x is y. <clears throat> um, so uh, by this observation, it suffices to uh, uh, show that for any Boolean X, there is a unique equivalence from bool to bool that maps true to X. And uh, I believe you have already proven it this week, but uh, it follows from the fact that the evaluation map from, from automorphisms to bool, uh, evaluating a truism equivalence. So that is, that is the canonical equivalence uh, between these two and, um, and this is the proof. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Um, so there's a few corollaries about this. 
um, because we have uh, proven some total space to be contractible by the fundamental theorem it follows that we have characterized an identity type and in this case it's the identity type of the type of two element types um, two equals x uh, is equivalent to the type of points of x um, and also another corollary is um, is uh, about uh, pullbacks again so sorry they're gonna come back um, we have shown that the uh, uh, sigma x and u to x is contractible so this one here you can really read it as sigma x in uh, the type of two element type such that x holds and um, and then you notice that okay this uh, b of x is a two element type it maps to uh, to the like the x boolean um, type here and that induces a fiberwise equivalence and by this fiberwise equivalence it follows that this square is a pullback square or um, that we have a fiber sequence because we have uh, a unit type on one of the corners uh, so this uh, sequence here is a fiber sequence that's going to come back later and that follows from um, from just these observations about the type of two element types and um, I have a footnote here that says that the map, the, the base point inclusion is the universal line bundle. So the way you think about a line bundle over a type is it should assign a line to every point in the type, but to know um, about the line is just to know where the points one and minus one, uh, how, how, they, how they go. So a line bundle is really the same thing as a, as a bundle of booleans. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, don't order your two order sets, two element sets, then you just uh, get bull. <clears throat> um, so we, uh, the last part is just the construction of the real projective spaces. Uh, let's recall the classical construction. So RPN, it's defined out of the N sphere by identifying antipodal pairs of points. So re remember that uh, construction from your course in topology. You have like a sphere like earth and then you identify the two antipodal points and you um and that's exactly how you um well how rpn is defined um so what this means is you have this quotient map from sn to rpn and the fibers of that quotient map are the booleans <clears throat> uh, but in homotopical languages means just that we have a fiber sequence like that so this is um, this is what we are after now. We want to construct some spaces that fit in a fiber sequence like this. <clears throat> and when we have that, we are, we will be happy. Uh, so our goal is this fiber sequence. Uh, let's recall the descent theorem in a slightly different form. So again, it's about the cube, um, like this. And we assume that the two squares in this uh, in this cube are pullback squares. Um, but now we don't assume that the bottom square is a pushout square. Uh, we just immediately uh, give an equivalence. So on, we only assume that the two squares here are pullback squares. Then uh, we say that the two squares in the front are pullback squares. So these two. Uh, if and only if. Okay, uh, I didn't have pushouts here, but I can take a pushout. There will be a different type than X. It will be a pushout of A and S, and it will map into X. And on the top, the same. Um, and uh, and by uh, by naturality, there will be a map here. Uh, and and this will be a pullback square. So this is um, what's well, not provable in that. I guess I should not pay attention to the chat. Um, so this is the form of the descent theorem that uh, that we like to use, and you can easily derive this form from the previous form. It's just a slight generalization that allows us to uh, to construct um, the RPNs a little bit more efficient. And uh, maybe you remember from Christian Sattler's talk that he talked about this um, push out product and then we noticed that uh, that this is related to the join so this is a slightly simpler construction but it's related to what he said 
suppose I start with a map F from A to X and a map G from B to X, like here. And then I can first take uh, the pullback of F and G. I get a square like this. And now I can take the uh, push out of that pullback. And that push out by the universal property is going to map into X. Um, and this map, I'm going to call it the join of F and G. And, uh, and the reason is that the fibers of this map are going to be the joints of the fibers of F and the fiber of G. And, uh, and this type here is also called the fiberized join of A and B over X. <clears throat> it's like a join in a slice, um, slice category. Um, so um, this is the reason why I call it the join is this theorem for any X we have an equivalence that the fiber of the join of F and G at X is the join of the fibers. And uh, how do you uh, prove this? You make a cube. And so in the bottom, we have this uh, standard pullback square. We put a unit type here. We start pulling back, we get the fiber. We pull back again, we get, get the fiber. And we pull back once more, we get the product of the fibers. And this is a pullback uh, because, um, well, um, maybe you know that sometimes pullbacks are called fiber products and that's because this is a pullback. <clears throat> so there's something you can show that the, uh, this uh, square in the back is also a pullback and the top square is also a pullback. So every square in this thing is pullback. Um, because if you have a pullback um, with one in the corner, then it's just a product. <clears throat> Uh, okay, but uh, but at least we know that the uh, squares in the back are um, pullback squares, and that allows us to uh, apply the uh, um, form of the descent theorem that we had previously. So by the descent theorem, uh, oh yeah, and also because the two front squares are also pullbacks. So by the descent theorem, we um, uh, oops, sorry, I'm switching too much. So the two front squares are pullbacks. Now we take the push out of this, uh, this thing and the push out of the bottom thing. And by the descent theorem, we get uh, a pullback square. Okay, uh, that's great because uh, here um, the push out, it was the join. Here is the fiber wise join, this is the map. And we have one in the corner here. So that means that the fiber of F join G is gonna be this type here. <clears throat> because this is pullback. Uh, and that is, that is the proof of this theorem. And now, finally, the definition of RPN. We define, uh, oh. okay, I guess I didn't put my macro, macros correctly. Uh, we define RPN equipped with maps from gamma n to, uh, with gamma n from RPN to U2. Sorry about that. So here is the, correct form um, uh, recursively. So starting at zero, the RP zero is just a point. Um, why is that? Because it's the quotient of the zero sphere by antipodal points. The zero sphere is booleans and the two points are by definition antipodal. So you quotient them and it's one. <clears throat> uh, so this is the correct definition. And gamma from RP zero to um, uh, to the type of two element types is just the base point inclusion. It's just maps to a bool. Okay, and now how do you get from uh, RP uh, n to RPN plus one? Is uh, well, we have um, we have our map gamma n, and uh, it goes into U, and we have uh, the base point inclusion that goes into U. So we can just uh, join uh, over. Um, over the type of two element types. This is the fiberized join. Um, I realized I should have drawn a picture here. Um, but gamma n plus one, this is really the construction is the join of gamma n and gamma zero. And, uh, and RPN plus one is just defined to be the domain of this map. <clears throat> that is the construction of the RPNs. Okay, uh, so we got a candidate for our definition, but we said we were after a certain fiber sequence. Uh, remember, that was coming from the construction of the RPNs. And um, 
So we have to show that the total space of the gammas is, um, is Sn. And once we that once we have that, we get uh, we get our fiber sequence <clears throat> that uh, characterizes uh, RPN. Uh, okay, so this is theorem. We have such an equivalence, and um, and this is just from the previous fact that uh, gamma n plus one is the join of gamma n with gamma zero which is just a map from two into one. So, um, so this fiber is the join of the, the fibers of those two maps, the fiber of uh, gamma n and two. But remember from lecture three today that joining with two is suspension. Uh, so here we have a recursive formula that says uh, the fiber of gamma n is iterated suspension. Uh, iterated suspension of uh, of twos and that means that it's going to be um, uh, an n sphere so this is this follows by recursion now from from this observation and um, <clears throat> now we've finished the proof um, remember uh, from uh, the first part about the uh, type of two element types so we had the fiber sequence. I'm going to go back to it because it's good to see it again. We have this fiber sequence. So if we have a, a map B from A into the type of two element types, then the total space of that uh, family will be the fiber of this map. And now we have RPN on this spot and gamma N here. So the total space of, um, of gamma will be the fiber of gamma and uh, and that's great because we just computed the fiber of gamma and we said the fiber of gamma is the n sphere so now we also say the fiber of gamma is the total space of of gamma that means that the total space of gamma is the n sphere and wasn't that exactly what we claimed so that's uh, that's exactly the claim so the proof is finished and um, so we have this map from Sn into Rpn going into the type of two element types. And that means that uh, two is the fiber of this sequence. And um, uh, that's it for me today. Are there any questions? Um, could we relate um, grass menus to uh, this? to a fiber sequence analogous to this one yes um, where two is like three or four or whatever um so uh, all the grass menus also fit in similar uh, fiber sequences including uh, involving stiefel manifolds and um and they all come equipped with uh with uh, like rn bundles say some kind of factor bundles. Um, <clears throat> so very definitely you, uh, you have um, you have similar fiber sequences and here the Stiefel manifolds are just spheres. Um, so they're kind of simpler. Um, but, um, but what I meant was more along the lines of, so you said that uh, line bundles can be seen as um, dependent functions to the unit to the um, type of types of two terms. Yeah. Yes. Could mm -hmm. like plane bundles or hyperplane bundles yes. be like dependent types to the universe of mm -hmm. types. Yeah. And would would that relate to um, Rasmanians as being like yes 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 absolutely. Being R N. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, in the end, what you like with the Grassmannians is to say a vector bundle over a type is is a map into a Grassmannian. Um, yeah, they, yeah. They, they will be the universal vector bundles in a way. Um, and here we have this U2. Um, actually, it is, it is also a real projective space. It is the infinite real projective space. I could have, could have said that, but it, uh, yeah. It, uh, for the Grassmannians, you use infinite Grassmannians, I think. Um, 
Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you.